Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadi and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, for the first time ever on this channel, we are going to be doing a video breakdown where I am going to show you a little peek behind the curtain. We're gonna open up one of my most recent projects and I'm gonna explain to you everything that I did to get the desired result that I had in that video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So the project that we're gonna be breaking down today is called Let There Be Light. It was my video submission for the Adobe X Mashup Events LA hashtag Adobe challenge that was just going on these last couple weeks. And basically the Adobe challenge was they sent a box to a bunch of people, a bunch of different influencers from all walks of creative life. And inside of that box was a little spin wheel and you spun the wheel and it landed on a number. And then that number corresponded to a little item that you had to use in a creative video as a special effect or otherwise. So I spun the wheel and I got number four, which was fairy lights. And if you didn't know any of this, that means you're not following me on Instagram. So at Nadia and Sands on Instagram, you guys would have known about this a week ago, but hey, we aim to please here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. So we're doing a breakdown video for you on YouTube for those of you that missed it. Anyways, now you know the backstory. Here's the video that I submitted. A light has come. A light is coming. At 299 million. 792,458 meters per second, a light has come, and a light is coming. It breaks, it illuminates, and it captivates. It stimulates the senses and eliminates the dark. Let there be light, right? All right, sweet. For the first time ever on this channel, we are going to break down this video shot for shot, technique for technique, and you, I promise, are going to walk away going, huh, interesting. Subscribe, like, thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment section below because we are getting started right now. Okay, so the first thing I did was create the light leaks using the fairy lights. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen this already, but I'm gonna go over it again. I took the lens off of my camera and then dangled the lights in front of the sensor to create the light leaks. I know I wanted to overlay these over the footage as an added special effect for the challenge, so I did that first. Next, I really wanted to create the right vibe with the music and the voiceover, so I searched for a little while until I found this track called Big Spoon on Epidemic Sound. I really liked the vibe and was able to find the instrumental. One of the main reasons I love Epidemic Sound in the first place is the ability to really pull apart music and grab stems and individual parts of music tracks and instrumentals and ones with vocals. It just, it gives you a lot of versatility with music for your edits, and that's why I love it so much. By the way, in the video description below, you will find a Linktree link, which will give you a free month of Epidemic Sound on me, a gift to you you. You're welcome. Okay, so after I found the music, I listened to probably 45 minutes worth of motivational speeches on YouTube about light until I stumbled across this video by John Jorgensen. Light is energy. It's rays and waves greeting us with a bright, sunny face. So I downloaded that video off of YouTube and then threw the music track and that voiceover track into Ableton Live, messed around with the audio pitch, the audio timing, chopping up the voiceover so it was different than the original video, adding reverb, etc. until I ended up with something that I really liked. I kind of did a remix of it. So after I got my music and voiceover track locked down, I experimented with some shots and editing techniques to make sure that the concept was actually going to work well for this challenge. So here's a super rough edit of some stuff that actually never made it into the edit. At 299,792,458 meters per second, a light has come and a light is coming. It breaks. It illuminates and it captivates. It stimulates the senses and eliminates the dark. Let there be light, right? So that was my proof of concept. And once I knew the concept was going to work, I actually storyboarded everything out against the music track with simple title cards inside of Premiere. It's very messy, I'm not proud of it, but it actually does the job. And once I knew I had a solid shot list, it was time to shoot everything. So I grabbed my camera, which is an a7 III with a 24 to 70 G Master lens on it. I shot everything in my apartment. And since most of it was shot in the dark, I had to boost the ISO pretty high, but I knew I was going to use neat video noise reduction later. So I wasn't really that worried. And before you get all sassy in the comments, no, this video is not sponsored by Neat Video Noise Reduction. It's just an absolutely god tier plugin that I, your old pal Naughty and Sans from Learn How to Add Stuff, want to tell you about because it's awesome. And we're going to get to that a little bit later in this video. But just know, Neat Video Noise Reduction, A++. So I shot all my footage, starting first with the lights off, 
then I turned them on, and then I turned on the electronic element that the lights were activating because I knew I was going to mask and comp it all together in the edit. Finally, it was time to edit everything together. I started off with cinema crop lines on the topmost layer of my timeline so I could do a little fake 235 to 1 for a more cinematic feel. Starting off with this in your timeline gives you the opportunity to reframe certain clips as you go along for 235 to 1, and then you don't have to go back and like re reframe them all later. And then right underneath that, I have an adjustment layer with magic bullet looks on it with a preset that I tweaked to kind of match the footage look that I was going for. I like to work personally with a LUT on because it will hide a lot of imperfections as you're working, but I will say if you don't have a decent PC, I would not recommend working with a LUT on as it might slow down your workflow. So depends on your computer, but that's what I do. As for the masking, I used a variety of techniques when it came to the masking of the lights themselves. Some of them, I had very shallow masks just around the light bulb. Some of them, I masked the entire frame in different large chunks. And some of them, I actually threw into After Effects to mask because you're able to feather certain parts and certain sides of your mask in After Effects. Something that unfortunately isn't available in Adobe Premiere for some reason, but it should be. Listen, Adobe Premiere team, I've got nothing but love for you guys. You're doing amazing work, but the masking inside of Adobe Premiere is like a millimeter of a fraction above a steaming hot pile of garbage. Okay, so please, for me, for your old pal Naughty and Sands have learned how to edit stuff, like and subscribe, comment in the comment section below. Please fix the masking inside of Adobe Premiere. Thank you. Anyways. I spent a majority of my time masking and comping, and each scene I ended up nesting on my timeline because I didn't want to have to deal with 20 plus video tracks on my timeline. Nobody has time for that, it's just ugly, so just nest everything. Nests in Premiere are basically just smaller compositions, so you can throw 20 plus tracks into a nest, but on your main timeline, it's just one small little clip, it looks nice, it's green, nest your sequences. After I worked through most of my timeline, I started layering in the light leaks by putting them on the top video track, setting the blend mode to screen, and then giving it some color correction so it blended in with my shots a little bit more. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I jumped around a lot from an editing perspective. Sometimes I was masking, sometimes I was layering in light leaks. I was experimenting as I was going to see which methods worked best for certain scenes on my timeline. Playing around with different techniques while you're working will open up new creative doors and also teach you along the way, so I highly recommend setting time aside for playing around. And I want to emphasize setting time aside for playtime because the last thing that you want to do is spend your entire night playing and experimenting with something, especially when you're on a deadline because then you're going to get behind and then you're going to get all stressed and you're not going to put in good quality work. So I say set time aside, literally do it. Set a timer on your phone for 30 minutes and in that 30 minutes, tell yourself, I'm going to spend this 30 minutes just playing and experimenting and finding different creative avenues. And then at the end of that 30 minutes, I'm going to jump back into my edit and keep moving forward because I don't want to miss deadlines. Even if you don't have a technical deadline, set a deadline for yourself, okay? Set a deadline to finish the project, but also set yourself time to just creatively play and explore with different techniques because then it's going to open up more creative doors for you and you're going to have more fun for your project. And now I'm getting on a complete tangent and we're going to jump back into the breakdown. Okay, I had all my light leaks in and everything was masked. So I started making some tweaks to my scenes, like adding some light bokeh into this light bulb scene that wasn't there before. I used video copilot optical flares for that one. It ended up looking really great. Then after that, I tweaked some more things and I started layering in adjustment layers with transform applied so I can do slow push-ins and pull-outs from all of my footage. Since I shot everything on a tripod, I felt it needed a little bit of movement throughout the piece. And to be honest, I don't think I scaled more than 1% on any shot. It's a very subtle effect, but it ended up doing the job. And once that was done, I exported the timeline to a ProRes file, then I re-imported that ProRes file back into my timeline so I could start doing all of the noise reduction that was necessary for this piece. Exporting and then re-importing just makes it so my computer doesn't have to work as hard during noise processing because it's using a single video file instead of a nested sequence with 20 plus 4K clips inside of it. Now, in all honesty, guys, Neat Video is probably one of my most used plugins, but it's definitely a process hog for any PC, but it's totally worth it if you're finding yourself in a noisy low light situation. And just to prove it, here is a raw clip that I shot in the dark and I pushed the ISO super high. And here's that exact same clip with Neat Video applied to it. It's actually insane what this plugin does and I would highly recommend picking it up to use as a finishing pass on any of your videos. So with all the noise reduction done, the very last thing I did was just some finishing little tweaks here and there, adding contrast, adding highlights, a little bit of glow on some of the lights that needed it. And that was it. We finished the video. I submitted it to Adobe X Mashup Events LA, hashtag Adobe Challenge, and they were like, hey, Naughty and Sans, 
thanks for doing this. And by the way, I didn't sign up for this. They reached out to me and they were like, here, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. A challenge sounds nice right about now. What do you think, guys? First ever breakdown video on this channel. Did you have a good time? Did you have some fun? Did you learn something new? If you did, drop it in the comment section below. And while you're down there below this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done it already. But seriously, if you did learn something new, let me know what it was in the comments. I would like to know personally. And that is it, guys. I have nothing else to give for this video. I do want to thank you for stopping by and thank you for making it to the end if you're still here. Hopefully you are. In the video description below, you will find a link tree link with access to my social media accounts, a bunch of stuff to help you, a free trial to Epidemic Sound, really awesome post-production related things that you can just dive into and have a blast. Subscribe, did I say that already? Comment, thumbs up, all that good stuff. I didn't even get to drink my extremely full cup of coffee until now. So I'm gonna go do that. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you in the next one. Mm, it's cold. <laughs>